Hi, welcome to JJ's Productions. We've got another Hitman 2 video. This time we're in Whittleton Creek and we're doing two challenges. We are doing Whittleton Creek Electric and we are doing Sold. So they're quite contrasting challenges but I did find them interesting. However, there was a slight problem in regards to Sold. Now, this is a Silent Assassin route and it is a complete video as far as completing the challenges. However, I was aiming for another challenge and that is why this video could have been a bit shorter. I will fast forward through the offensive piece, but I was trying to do the secondary challenge in the house where you show Nolan Cassidy around and I missed one room out. So uh, yeah, that was a bit awkward, but I couldn't work out for the life of me what room I'd missed and it turns out it was the attic. So. I will skip through it and I'll show it in another video, but unfortunately the vid the length of the mission was about 30 odd minutes when it could have been at least 30 with three challenges. So yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed in that, but I thought I had I thought there might have been a glitch or something or I'd missed something obvious, so I couldn't really go back and do it again. Anyway, we're going to kill Janus first because he's the easiest one and the hardest one at the same time. It's quite hard to believe that, but I had issues with Janus in this uh, kill. The idea is we've got to electrocute him, and he isn't overly difficult to electrocute, yet he isn't easy either. So I'm going to pick up this emetic rat poison, and the idea is we're going to poison his drink. We're going to make sure that he goes into the bathroom. The difficulty in this is that you've got to make sure that you can electrocute him with water. So that's why I put the car battery along, but it isn't a guarantee that um, he will be the one to go in there. For example, you can just turn the taps and sometimes he'll go in there, but other times it'll be one of the guards. And I was getting inconsistent results, so I found the best way to get rid of the inconsistency was to get rid of this guard. This guard was the most consistent in terms of going into the bathroom, but Janus's personal bodyguard, whose name I haven't learned yet, he was also going in as well. So let's knock this guy out first. I've got the fire extinguisher and we're just going to use it to knock him out. You could do it now because no one will come and investigate the generator if you don't turn it off. But uh, yeah, it's always wise just to, you know, keep practice going and not to risk it as such. So pop him in this uh, freezer and you can change this guys to make things easier, I would advise it actually, it's going to be a lot more complicated if you don't. So I'm going to pick up the goodies he's dropped, which I think is just a submachine gun. We're going to go through here and we're actually going to go back into the yard. The idea is we need to get into the bathroom that Janus will be going into. So I get stuck a little bit there, but uh, if you're not as incompetent as I was looking there, you should be able to sneak through. We're going to just use the porch to actually climb through and we're going to go into the bathroom via the window. At this point you can drop the car battery and you can turn on the tap. Now, the aim here isn't to electrocute the first person to come in because it won't be Janus. It'll be Janus's bodyguard. The idea is though that by doing this we've created a puddle. At that point, when Janus is poisoned, he'll walk out into the puddle, sorry, he'll walk into the bathroom and walk into the puddle and electrocute himself. So this is all just setting up the kill. It's not necessarily um, that we need him to have a flooded bathroom and walk in because of it. We're just going to make sure he walks in when the uh, poison takes effect. So yeah, there's nothing too complicated about this, I hope, but I found it was more consistent doing this than going another route such as just trying to knock out his personal bodyguard who's investigating or anything weird like that. I'm not 100% sure what happened here, I don't know if I dropped a gun or something, just to, I think that might have actually been what happened, I think I dropped a gun trying to lure that bodyguard away and it didn't have the desired effect, so yeah, the thing is if that ever worked then Janus would have come to investigate, but as you can see I did have a plan in mind which turned out to be good, just don't do not do that with the gun drop because it doesn't help, just let that bodyguard clean the mess up. Because as you can see, we're going to poison the drink and 
the kill is now pretty much set because the idea is we go in the room, we're going to place the car battery down and there's water on the floor as you can see. So we're going to drop the car battery, we'll shoot the car battery so that it sparks and once Janus walks in the room, he's dead. So I wasn't convinced on this, this is why I was sort of messing about, but as soon as you shoot it you can see the electric, you can see the puddle looking quite electric. So yeah, I was quite content that the kill was completed. I was checking, I will admit I did slow down, but yeah, it's, uh, that is a safe way to kill him. At this point now I'm just going to focus on getting a bit of evidence because unfortunately with this level you do need evidence. I wish there was ways to find the clues without having to go the long way round as such, but it's not the end of the world that you have to do it, it's just a little nuisance. Equally it's a bit of a nuisance that the most convenient clue to get is being blocked by this guy, so we're going to knock him out. There's a closet that we can put him into, and I'm also going to shoot the surveillance just in case there's any around that we don't want to get caught by. So I was having a little bit of uh, difficulty aiming. I, if I've mentioned it in recent videos, I've got a glitch with one of my controllers uh, stopping 47 from running. What my other controller, which is a backup at the moment, also aims to the left a little too easily, so it was a little bit difficult taking that shot. I really need new game controls at this current rate. Anyway, moving on, we've got the first clue. We're going to go upstairs, if I remember correctly, to get the second clue. I say remember correctly because I recorded this about a week and a half ago now, so this is old news for me. <laughs> so we're just going to wait for that enforcer to go on a cycle, and I actually think I decided to go outside at this point because I realised I couldn't jump through that window. So I decided let's go outside and that way I can go up the pipe. I think that is the easier way in this uh, instance because if you're going to go um, through the house you've got to actually dodge more enforcers so if you just climb up the pipe outside it's a little bit easier to get upstairs. The difficulty is getting past this guy who's just standing around but again it's slightly easier than the alternative. So I'd advise just walking over here, make sure he isn't looking when you throw it and throw a coin. Also make sure no one from inside sees you like they nearly did just now. But uh, it should be that he'll go to investigate the coin, and when he does, well maybe he didn't hear that coin, I can't remember off the top of my head. Looks like he didn't hear it, now he's just getting on the phone about something. So yeah, you've got to wait up, I mean I took a fair bit of time here, and it's because I hadn't got a rush. The Next kill, the sold kill, hasn't got any time constraints. It's not as if you've got a rush to get to one M4 or one NPC, so you can take your time. And it is a pretty good job that because this guy really was a nuisance. He turns around so consistently that it's very hard to guarantee that he's not going to see you doing something. So, um, yeah, I would have liked this to be easier, but equally I'm thinking I'm not in a rush. So... Yeah, I think we're on third or fourth time lucky now because I'm actually curious if I just climbed up the pipe without uh, waiting for that guy now. Yeah, I think I do. So yeah, climb. If your timing's right like that, just climb because no one will see you. So just lean on this uh, air conditioner. Make sure no one's in the room, as they are in this instance, before you climb through. And as soon as you that guy's gone out of the room, you can step inside and you can get the second clue, which if I remember right is a recording tape or um, yeah, just a microfilm I think it was. As you can see, Janus has been eliminated, he's had his poison and he's walked in the bathroom and he's electrocuted himself, so that is Whittleton Creek Electric completed. We're exiting the house and we're now going to go and get a second set of emetic poison. Now, I wasn't 100% certain where on the map it would be. Now, before we get there, I also decided that I wanted to get my suburban, suburban suit back, so that is what was going on here. But yeah, I decided I wanted to take my suit back, so that's why I'm going back in the garage. But yeah, the second set of uh, emetic pills I've smuggled in. So if you know where there's a second emetic poison, by all means go for it, because it'd be much more convenient. Also, you'll notice Janice's body was found pretty fast, so don't worry. Accident kills don't count with body found, so no problems there. But yeah, the second emetic pills are in this building. This sheriff looking guy was a concern. I thought, will he turn left and see me, lock picking the door? Turns out he doesn't. Not to mention it isn't illegal to go in here, so you could just jump through the window. 
So they're in that pile there, so just pick the pills up. Again, if you know where some are in the map, besides the ones I've already used, by all means go for them. And at this point we're just going to poison the real estate agent. He does take a while to get going, in that whilst you're waiting for him to go and throw up somewhere, you can actually get the third piece of evidence. Or maybe not get the third piece, but you can actually just trigger this second piece. So there's quite a few things you can do. As it turns out, what I actually decided to do was go up here, because there are things to do up here. So we've got to knock this guy out, we're going to pick up a meaty bone, and you have to circle around him, you might even have to bump him just to slow him down, knock him out with the meaty bone, and there is a closet in the room just opposite, so we're going to drag him into there, just so that if anyone does venture upstairs, which I don't believe happens, but just on the off chance it does, no one will find a body. So, change disguise, and at that point we are sorted, I believe. So, yeah, I'm just trying to remember if I did go into the loft at this point. I believe I do, because I did need to do that for the challenge. So, yeah, I'm just actually going into the loft. So, you can see the loft ladder string here, and we're going to go up and just get the second clue sorted. So, the idea is you go to the computer at the back, the microfilm reader, and you just have to... Do, do what prompts on the screen, which I think is just basically go up and down with your thumbstick. So, nothing too drastic, but just basically says Janus was keeping notes on the Ark Society. So, or, well actually it says they're constant meeting confirmed, so it's probably something to do with constant. So the last piece of evidence we're going to get is the date, November 13th, and I believe the one I get is from Batty's, yard, uh, Batty's shed. So, nothing too complicated there again, but uh, the idea is we're going to get that whilst this real estate agent is going to puke. The reason for that is he goes quite a way away. There is also a slight difficulty at this point that I had forgotten to pick up a blueberry muffin, and I hadn't got a way of getting the muffin. As you can see, I've got no food. So I was panicking a little bit here and thinking, now, how can I get that muffin? Because I knew there was a van over there and I thought, could I get a muffin from somewhere over here? But, there's an enforcer here as well, and I couldn't see a way to get any of them without being spotted. So I decided to go back to the stand where we're going to poison the target, and I thought the best way to do it is to get rid of this enforcer. My advice would be, just don't faff around like I'm doing here and get a muffin bit at the start. I know you might be saying I should have said that at the start, and I will agree, I should have actually pointed this out right at the beginning, but I would advise doing it. Just for the fact that if anything, A, if you pick up several muffins you've got a knockout weapon, but also you don't want to be going through this rigmarole. So whilst he's, I uh, wouldn't do it whilst he's returning, <laughs> that is an unfortunate will catch you. Not to mention he did come all the way round as if he saw you, so a bit of weird NPC action going on here. But the idea is we're going to put the muffin on the plate. As soon as it's on the plate we can put some emetic poison on it and the real estate agent will immediately get drawn to it and he'll be poisoned. So we're going to just sneak up, place it onto the plate, we're going to then poison it on the plate. I really wish there was an action where you could just drop it naturally and put the poison in and then put it on the plate, but that's a separate story entirely. Um, so yeah, he'll go to pick up the muffin and whilst he's doing that we're going to get the date clue. So. It's just over here, it's not too far away, and it does just give us something to do while he's walking over to where he throws up, because it is quite a walk actually. I think it was a slight problem in terms of level design, in that they hadn't got like a public toilet for instance, and he wouldn't have access naturally to a house, so they had to find a place for him to throw up, and it turns out it's the uh, just in the park on the left of the entrance, so he's got a bit of a walk to do. As you can see, I'm trespassing at this point, so do be careful. I would advise turning on the generator just so that he doesn't bother you. I do decide to go through the, lock, the door, so I decide to lockpick it. Um, the evidence is just inside, so it isn't too far away though, so no issues there. Crouch just so he can't see you, but because you've turned the generator on, you'll be able to walk away without being spotted. And that's all three clues found, so we haven't got to worry about that. All we've got to do now is eliminate Nolan Cassidy. And as you can see, Nolan's there, he's not too far away. The, if you could have done a lot of this quicker, because as you saw, I've dillied and dallied at times, and I would like to do this route again in the future and try and speed it up a little. But if you can actually get it more efficient, you should be able to get Nolan whilst he's outside the house. 
and as you can see, the real estate guy is only just going to his puke position, so it's a good job we got the evidence at this point because we would have wasted time had we just followed him. So yeah, we just gotta wait for him to turn around, which he does now, use the meaty bone to knock him out, and we're gonna just drag him and dump him through this window. There is a, I think a dumpster inside, or a closet or something, so we are going to hide his body, and make sure you pick up his key as well, because that is quite important for this challenge in terms of getting into the house first of all, but also, you don't want to be using a lockpick unless you need to, and you will need to if you want to do the side quest, as I'll call it. So, let's go find Nolan, and he's going to be inside the house at this point. You are allowed, if I'm right, to go in the house if you haven't got any weapons on you. And as you will notice, I'm going to get frisked and I've got a weapon on me. So, that wasn't really possible at this point. I was tempted to go inside, but I think in the end I decided, well, what's the point in doing that when I can just wait a moment. As you can see, I've got a machine gun on me as well, so... I was quite heavily armed at this point, so you can drop your stuff and try and get the frisk. I think I actually decided to do it. <laughs> it as you'll be aware, I've got the custom 5mm, so that is friskable, you won't get caught with that. But the machine gun was the issue, so I'm actually getting frisked at this point when Nolan Cassidy walks out, so... Timing-wise, I was a little bit out with this entire route. It's not impossible to fix, I actually think if you don't hesitate as much as I did. I'm repeating myself a little, but if you don't hesitate as much as I did, you should get much smoother timing. Not to mention, if you do the side challenge, which is showing Cassidy around all the rooms of the for sale house, it will take as much time, but you will get the challenge, whereas I didn't, and I feel like I wasted about eight minutes of my life. So, the house is just over here. It's just the one next door to the one with the party. It's pretty obvious to spot because you've got the big for sale sign. The challenge we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, kill Casty with a defence mecha mechanism around a safe room. It's quite a unique challenge. It's not something I would expect for a level like this, but it's quite fun to see. Now, if you are going to do what I tried to do, which is show Casty around the entire house, then I would advise that you run upstairs right now and lockpick a door upstairs at the front right room. That's very hard to describe, but essentially there's one room that is locked and you cannot gain it with a house key, so you will need to lockpick it. If you wait like I did, then Cassidy will walk in and you're going to have a bit of a difficult time actually getting rid of him. I tried dropping a gun to distract him and that slowed things down because they had to get someone from the village to come and collect the gun. Which was more amusing because the gun gets taken downstairs, so it's not as if it's a uh, a long walk for this guy, but uh, yeah, a very strange incident. So, as you can see, 47's giving the guided tour, and I'm going to fast forward through it, not because it isn't humorous, but because I want to detail it more in a future video. So, see you in a moment. When I said I felt like I wasted eight minutes of my life, it was pretty close to that, so yeah, if you are doing this, don't forget the attic. But this is the important area, the basement, and 47's just finishing the tour, or at least he thought he was anyway. And essentially we're just going to show him this room on the right. As you can tell by the subtitles, 47, uh, not 47, Cassidy was quite impressed, he noticed that it was a vault. I also just happened to be amused that my pistol was there at that point. And what we're going to do is we're going to let Casty turn the vault on. So there are lasers in there and he's going to just check it out and he's going to deactivate the lasers. But then he will turn the laser, we're going to turn the lasers back on. So yeah, it's a little bit interesting. So pick up the keycard and I think you have to use it on a panel just to the left. There we go. The idea is that will open the door. I'm assuming the lasers turn on, there we go, and Casty 
manages to turn the lasers off using the panel to his left right now. So, yeah, it's a little amusing kill. The idea is, once Cassidy's uh, turned the lasers off, he'll send his bodyguard away while he goes to inspect the vault or the safe room or whatever we're calling it. And it's pretty easy to guess what the kill is. So, yeah, we're just going to wait for Cassidy to finish fixing it. And we're then going pretty much kill him with his own little smart ass idea. So yeah, I really did enjoy this challenge. I really wish that I had managed to get the, the actual side challenge. I'm trying to remember what it's called. It was something like extensive presentation or something. But uh, like I say, I'm going to cover that in a future video. It's, if anything, 47 and it really sold that challenge. You know, it was one way you think, wow, you know, that was a really fun playthrough, you know, and I, I won't mind playing that again because it was really fun. And I was, I was following him in at this point because I thought, maybe this is the last room. I was hoping that was it and not the attic, but I knew I wouldn't get back upstairs now. So as soon as that's the case, you think, right, turn the lasers back on and he's dead. <laughs> it's quite an explosive kill, that's safe to say. Um, so that's challenge completed, sold. At this point, all you've got to do is exit, and I realised that there wasn't going to be anything that would um, actually stop me, so I thought, why don't I just try and change back into my suit? So that's why I made a quick U-turn. I decided, right, let's go back into the house with the party and get my suit back. So, yeah, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to exit the level. But thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. I'm aiming to get five likes on as many videos as possible, so if you could be one of five, I would appreciate that. If you haven't already, subscribe to JJ's Productions. We've got more Hitman 2 videos coming in the near future. I think the next video will be in the Isle of Scale, although I haven't decided if I'm going to do another Whittleton Creek video first. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. This has been Josh from JJ's Productions, and until next time, Bye for now, everyone.